Uh, his book, uh, Profit First, is what he's going to be talking a lot about. You need sales for your roofing business. You subtract out the expenses you incur, and what's left over is profit. Have you ever been told by a loved one, somebody cares for you, every time you have a deposit, take your profit first? Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Mike, first question I have for you, how old is your roof? How's my roof? How old is your roof? You know, I just bought my house three years ago, so I don't know. When was the last time you paid to replace your roof? The, my prior house, so that was maybe 10 years ago, we uh, replaced the roof. What was the process? How did you find a roof or did you do it yourself? Um, no, I found my roofer online. Oh, did I do it myself? No, are you kidding me? Oh my God, I'm not an animal. Um, no, it, it was great. It was like two or three days. They, they, I remember they put like, um, they put all this, uh, these basically blankets and stuff down around the house. It wasn't blankets, but tarps, I guess is a better choice of words. It's great. It was the cleanest thing. I expected pure garbage everywhere. It was clean. It was perfect. Do you remember the name of the company who did your room? I don't. I don't. I don't. So if I, I would ask you for a referral. You wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. Well, I, I can't remember their name. I wish they followed up with me. Never heard from them again. You know, they did such a good job too. It's funny. Love it. Biggest financial mistake you ever made personally? Uh, I became an angel investor. So I, I didn't share my story, but I, I built and sold a couple companies, became a multimillionaire in my early 30s. And I, w I was so full of myself. I was like, I know everything, I can grow big businesses. I remember uh, I went out, I bought three cars. When I sold my second company, I was by, bought by a Fortune 500. I bought like a Land Rover, a BMW, a Dodge Viper. Um, I, got, I bought, got a house in Hawaii to go on sabbatical. I just went really large. Um, I became a dick. Uh, the Viper is actually the trophy of dicks, honestly. It was, um, and uh, uh, I thought I could grow any business. So I became an angel investor and I started 15 companies or so simultaneously and they all collapsed. I lost everything. I lost my houses, I lost my, my cars, I lost all my businesses. I didn't lose my family. And that got me restarted. Actually, that's what started Profit First, the stuff I taught. Like, I, I had to fix this for myself, but also help others, that uh, a way to become permanently profitable. Wow. Uh, franchise or save up to start your own company? I'm all in on starting my own companies. Franchises are excellent because they're, they're preordained systems. Actually, a very close friend of mine owns 100 Got Junk, um, and it's a great company. The, the culture is amazing. But for me, start it from day one because I, I I have all the stock, all the equity, it's all mine. And uh, I, I, if I'm gonna bet on anyone on this planet, I'll always bet on myself. And I hope everyone feels the same way. Always bet on yourself. And uh, that's how I like to roll, so my own company. That's for you, but uh, if, as a mentor, if I would ask you for advice, hey Mike, I'm thinking about starting a roofing business or a franchise. Yeah, it, it depends on you, right? If you're the type of person that you have the ability to do all the elements of managing the finances and growing the customers and, and doing the services, do it on your own. But if, if you're great at doing a service, but you don't know how to recruit customers, um, if you don't know how to create systems, a franchise, a good franchise can be excellent. Awesome. How much money do you need to start a business in 2020? Yeah, I, less is more. I, you know, less I think, is more? Yeah, less is more. I think you can- so you, you don't recommend to save up a whole bunch of money? When yeah, do, yeah, no. I, I, Service-based businesses, you can start with zero. You, you have the assets yourself. You know, I can start a cleaning company tomorrow, and just all I need to do is maybe buy a mop. But I can probably use the customer's mop and do it. You know, so some businesses we need assets. But I'll tell you, I, I think I, if I was starting a roofing company, not knowing anything about it, what I would do is call the sell the tell technique. I would go to uh, prospects and say, "Listen, I'm starting a roofing business, um, and here's the deal. I'm gonna, you're gonna be one of my first clients." and I am gonna learn a little bit on your dime. So therefore, I'm gonna cut it down to cost, only the cost for materials and some of my time. Um, but I ask that you become a reference for me if I do an excellent job. And I simply, because I'm cutting it down so much, I need you to prepay me to get all the materials. Are you willing to do that? I think the mistake is we think we have to be proficient and excellent in something before we roll it out. So I would just be very candid with my initial customers. I'm learning on your dime, but I'll give you a discount and you prepay me, and that's how I get started. So it doesn't require money. You become your own apprentice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. And we, unless we all are. Like everyone's, you know, the first time you do something is the first time you do something. When I started the business, I, I was doing a lot of gutter repair jobs. And I remember I did this $99 gutter repair job and I paid 
uh, hundred dollars to do it, but it was like I, I hired a gutter guy. I'm like, teach me every. I need to know where you buy this stuff. Smart. I need how to do it? Genius. And, and the homeowner gave me, and I paid homeowner fifty dollars to leave me a review online after that. And three years later, uh, that homeowner called me back, and I got eight thousand dollars suffered and facial job. I love it. So I think it's, it's it's a funny story, but I also think it's an amazing story because I think the biggest source of marketing we have is our reputation and word of mouth. It is worth in the very beginning to give away free or even cost a little bit just to get it done. Because look what it did for you. You're doing okay. <laughs> Fine. Um, give, an, uh, give an advice to a brand new business owner. A uh, brand new business owner is find your purpose. And this is not easy, but um, I believe for all of us, if we look back at our lives, there's, there's certain pivotal moments in my life, our lives. It, for me, it's when I lost a lot of money. Um, I, I didn't tell you this part of the story. I lost everything. I had to come home to my family and tell them we we're going to lose our house. We lost it 30 days later. My daughter was nine years old. She, I remember her standing up crying while I was crying. She ran out of the room to grab her piggy bank and she ran back and she goes, Daddy, since you can't provide for us anymore, I'll start doing it. Is, I'm so ashamed of that. I put our family in that situation, but that, that moment became a pivotal moment. I define my life's purpose is to eradicate entrepreneurial poverty. That's my words. You know, you start your business, everyone on the outside that's not an entrepreneur says, oh, you're a millionaire now. You don't even work. You sit on the beach drinking Mai Tais. No, you're working your ass off and you're not making money. That, that, I call that entrepreneurial poverty. And that day I said, I will fix this for this planet. I will do whatever it takes. We all have that. The, the, you know, the work you're doing is significant. You, you, you provide the fundamental need for humanity, which is safety, shelter. Like it is massive. When we, when we find our purpose in it, then we become relentless. Love it. Just uh, uh, share because of the context. We, we did a roofing process conference last year. We have 120 people. Cost me, cost me $70,000. <laughs> this year, we're going to break even. Yeah. We will be profitable next year. There you go. We are breaking even this year. We're not, it's not going to cost me. But I, I spent 70000 It was the best money spent, too. Because you have to spend. You have to make a name for yourself. I agree. Love it. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, accounting sounds so easy. So many people fail at it. Uh, you say that 83% of people don't have money for the yeah. next week. Is it financial discipline of Americans in general? Because we, and it goes from, it starts here, goes all over uh, the world. I left Russia 15 years ago and we didn't have loans back then. We didn't, uh, and now everybody loves cheap cash, cheap money. Uh, everybody's in debt. Uh, it's not only business owners who cannot afford next week payroll, but it's a homeowner. So I, I think it's like 60, 70% of people who cannot write $1,000 check. Why we have such bad financial culture? Yeah, so it's not just a U.S. problem. It's a global problem. So I, I've had the privilege of traveling everywhere. I've been to Moscow, Kiev, Leningrad, uh, Spasiba. Uh, and um, the, the problem is an international problem. I don't care where you are. The vast majority of business owners live off their bank accounts. The thing is, we're all being told to do accounting, but it's too much. I, I found that we have to, it's called behavioral intercepts. Look at what you already do and continue to do it, but channel the outcome you want. Here's an example. Um, I work out now regularly for the last seven years. I always wanted to work out, but I, I had to figure out how to do it religiously. And what I did was I noticed my behaviors. So when I get up in the morning, I would go to the bathroom, drink a cup of coffee, start skimming the internet, and then you know be lost and not work out. The first thing I do is when I wake up, I go to the bathroom. I started putting my gym sneakers on top of the toilet seat. The only way I can use the bathroom is by grabbing my sneakers. I'm like, just put them on. And I'm like, okay, I'm off to the gym. With our finances, the fact that we're told, no, have the discipline of doing accounting is not going to fix it. We have to intercept our behavioral path. And that's what the system does. Like when I asked the audience, when everyone was here, that, you know, everyone raised their hand. We check our bank accounts daily. That's, I'm telling you, that's awesome. That's you walking into the bathroom. Now what we need to do is we have to set those accounts up right there on the toilet seat. So those five accounts are at your bank. Just by doing that, you'll know what money is intended for what use, and you'll know what to do with it. It's the solution. Who would you recommend um, for financial advisor? Dave Ramsey, any big mentors out there who you agree with, like awesome teaching? Yeah, for personal finance, uh, Dave Ramsey is amazing. Um, he, he has a book called The Total Money Makeover and talks about managing debt. Uh, in my book, Profit First, I talk about ways to manage business debt. So if you have debt, how to eradicate it. But I'll tell you this, 
our personal life and our business life is like this. You know, if you have great business finances, uh, you're probably gonna have great home finances. If you have bad home finances, you're gonna have bad business finances. So to blend the two, uh, if I may be so bold, I would say get profit first for your business and Dave Ramsey's work with Total Money Makeover for your home. Would you recommend rent a house or buy a house? Uh, right, rent or buy a house? Uh, right now, the way interest rates are, I'll be buying <laughs> houses left and right. Um, I, I'll tell you this, I, another financial expert came to mind, and this may apply to buying a house. There's a financial expert named Susie Orman. I, I've never watched her before. I just flipped channels one day, and she's up on stage. But she said these, this one line that changed my whole perspective around managing money. She goes, I'll tell you the day you become rich. And I was like, yeah. The day you become rich is the day you get more joy out of saving money than spending money. I was like, that's it. The day I get more joy out of saving, I get so much joy out of not, I don't have any debt whatsoever, except I have a mortgage on a house. I get so much joy out of having money that I, I, I will forever be rich in that, I have a rich mindset now. So I think we, when it comes to buying or renting, uh, whatever you do, it just simply has to be within your means and you have to get joy out of that. And then once you associate joy with living in your means, there's no stopping you, you're rich. Why so many famous people, rich people go broke? 50 cent, we have all the NBA players, they, they make millions of 50 cent doesn't even have 50 cents. <laughs> yeah, he's broke. So um, I think, here's why I went broke my, the first time and hopefully the last time I went broke, is I thought that the accumulation of stuff gave me significance. I thought driving up that Viper, I remember driving up the Viper, it was so loud, blah, 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 pulling up that people would, you know, like people go crazy. So some guys went to me and said, oh my God, the, you know, chicks must love this. I'm like, if you consider a 13-year-old boy a chick, yeah, 13 year old boys like the Viper, that's about it. Once I started realizing none of that stuff matters, like no one cares what I have. No one we all care about ourselves, we don't care about that stuff. Um, that's when I became, I hope, permanently wealthy. I think people that accumulate money are not wealthy. They're rich, but they put it on effects. They're buying stuff. Wealth is a mindset. Rich is just a dollar account. Love it. Thank you so much. I have a couple of questions from our audience here. When, you, when would you suggest bringing someone in to assist with bookkeeping, accounting? Very common question I get all the time. Currently doing it all as a business owner. How do you present your profit with uh, first a structure to them? Yeah. So I would get a bookkeeper in relatively quickly just because the cost on the backside is expensive. You know, moving numbers around and stuff isn't that bad. When it comes to tax time and compliance, there has to be a lot of adjustments. If you just do it right from the get-go with a bookkeeper, and they can be very affordable, that's where I'd start. Um, Private First, I'm so proud that it's become popular enough that most bookkeepers will just recognize it exists. It doesn't mean they'll be doing it, but they'll recognize it. I would just get them the book. I, I think the most cost-effective, affordable way I can serve you or bookkeepers or anyone, it's just get the book. It's, it's 17 bucks. You can probably get for a penny, a used copy for a penny on Amazon right now. And it has the entire system in there. Awesome. Uh, another question for Mike. Um, when you make major purchase for your company, what account does it come out of? So, okay, so if, um, if you're doing profit first, uh, you, what I showed on the stage earlier was just the basic version. You can do an advanced version and add additional accounts. So I set up an account called Cap. X, which is capital expenditures, um, and I start allocating money toward that. Uh, for example, when I buy a car, I, this is on personal finance, so I use the same system, I have an account that says car, and there's money going in it. The day I have enough money to buy the car, I just go to the, the dealer and say I can pay cash for this. And they're like, what? I'm like, well, I, I've, I saved for it. What I'm doing is I'm making car payments now into this account so that I can buy the car in the future. So for my business, when I would need to buy a piece of equipment, Every week or something, I'm putting in $50, $100, and then when it comes to buying that new piece of equipment that costs $5,000, over a few years, I'll have the money piled up. One more question. Uh, what is the best rationale to make decisions to pull from the profit account? So, yeah, so the profit account, if you read the book, is, is used to celebrate and reward the shareholder. There are certain circumstances where a rainy day hits and you got to take action the profit account can also be your own bank. Is a bla uh, Black Friday can count as a rainy day? A Black Friday, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, sometimes your business can just get you know, sw swapped or something doesn't happen. So the profit account is you become your own bank. The problem thing many businesses do is when trouble hits, they try to get a loan or they try to get some kind of SBA funding and that's a mistake. 
Uh, who wants to lend to you when you're not financially viable? So start accumulating money in that profit account, and then when you need money, for an emergency, you have it there. Which account is used for reinvestment in a business? Large capital purchase such as trucks, buildings, etc. Yeah, so when it comes to large capital purchases for reinvestment in the business, I set an account called CapEx. You do not use your profit account to reinvest or plow back in the business. That term is really a bad term. Because people love to say, like, oh, I'm reinvesting my business, I'm plowing back. I, I was at an event, Dimitri, and I, similar size audience, and this, this woman came up to me at the end who owned a business, and she's like, I love your profit first system. She's like, I don't need it. She goes, we had 28% profit. I'm like, you don't need it. I mean, that's huge. And she's like, a $10 million company. It's like, that's huge. I said, well, so what would you do with that? She goes, we reinvested it. And that's when my, my devil horns come out. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, where'd it go? She goes, we put it back in the business. I'm like, what did the business do with it? She goes, we, we bought stuff. I'm like, that's not a profit. Devil. That's not a profit. The, the, the definition of profit is a reward to the shareholder, the person that owns the business. If money comes out to you as a shareholder, it's a profit. Or if it's reserved for the shareholder's benefit, you, it's a profit. The second the business spends it, it's an expense. So she was playing this Enron game. Oh, I had a 28% profit. I have nothing to show for it. I have no money. And I spent everything. So profit is always used to pay profit. The other accounts are used to fund the operations of the business. If it's capital expenditures, I'd set up a CapEx account, start allocating toward that to buy that building or do things, but never use profit to plow back in the business. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, brother. Thank you guys for coming. Mike Mikulovich. Thank you, brother. <laughs>